sacas más. All right, I'm sorry, yeah, my AirPod was uh connecting. Let me know if you guys if you guys can hear me. Let me disconnect my Bluetooth because it's over here getting on my nerve on my iPad. All right, that just solves all the problem. All right, here we go. So hope you guys can hear me. What well, welcome, welcome back, guys, to Kamisha Reviews. Today is a special program. I have been kind of dragging a little bit this week. And if there's a reason why. Let me go ahead and first find my tweet that I've been talking about for the past couple of days. And I want to, I'm going to go ahead and add it to this um, particular space. And I want you guys to follow me because this is actually important to me. People want to make comments. First, let me add this one. And then you guys can check it out. And then let me add the original video that I posted yesterday. And when I say on your mama, I need you guys to understand that when I use these kind of terp terminologies, I need you guys to just follow me and where I'm going with this. First of all, can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Thank you. Thank you so much for the hands up. All right. So one of the things I want to talk about is on your mama. But before I even get into Aunt Jemima, I want to talk about um, why I'm talking about Aunt Jemima and the reason why. The whole situation that came about was with um, Sari and Felicia, right? The biggest things that people were talking about, the biggest things that people were saying is, you know, well... Um, she made cookies, they cooked or whatever, they got locked out, no big deal. We're super excited that Jag and Matt are buddies and besties, and they're good, you know, all this bullshit, right? I could, a lot of that stuff I don't give a fuck about. Y'all want to cheer on Matt being a loser and losing to two other people, Bowie, who has a weak-ass game and don't do shit, and Jag, who won everything, celebrate. Go right ahead. I ain't tripping, right? But the part that I do not like, the part that I don't like is the fact that you guys make the comment of, well, she's going to cook and fill my belly. I take a lot of issue with that. I also take a lot of issue with, I think it's a spoiler girl who posted that, how she said she doesn't understand. Well, let me go ahead and break it down for you. When I say Aunt Jemima, it is a thing for black women come from slavery, right? And showing a slave cooking breakfast and all the things because it's what we did as black women. You can go as far as back as any, it doesn't matter what year you want to go to. It has always been this way where we were the maids. We took care of everyone. Okay? And it is what it is. It became to a point where it was a stereotype. Well, we know she gonna cook food. And it was okay. And we took it. It didn't even say anything. But the part that gets me is that in 2023, why is it that we're still acting like it's a Popeye's commercial? Do you understand what I'm saying? Why is it that it's looking like this is a Popeye's commercial? Hi, welcome to Popeye's. Popeye's fried chicken. You know, that's kind of what it gives me when I listen to those men drag all the women that was in the house from Mimi, you know, to Sari, to Felicia, whatever, right? And then the thing about it, when Spoiler Girl, when Spoiler Girl made the comment she doesn't understand that Jared made the same comment. That's his mama. What child that you do not know is not going to say, I love my mama's cooking. You cannot compare the two. You cannot understand. Can you not get that we were called mammies? Understand 
That was our name. We were called Mammies. We had the red scarf and the red lipstick, and we made everybody laugh, and we made everybody happy. To be loyal, servitude, was all that we offered to the world. That was it. Being a called a mammy was a normal thing for black women. For years. Even when the name was removed, other names replaced it. So I could sit here and get, you know, upset or mad, but instead I decided to educate. The black mammy most of the time was the one who was the men's sexual everything. Because black women have always been, oh, they're about sex. And then go in the cook kitchen and cook up some good grub and take care of everybody else. But yet not be in the front, not be the leader, none of those things. In the background or in the kitchen. So with everybody in the world, including, including people who are of color, who may not agree with what I'm saying, who may come for me, I'll stand 10 toes dimes on this, that if you guys think it's okay that Jag, Matt, and fucking Bowie Jane can sit here and drag these black women and then go downstairs and eat the cookies hide the wine and lock the doors, please tell me what am I saying that's incorrect? We should celebrate this? This is some good gameplay. Yes. You have two black women that are over 40 who are cooking for you, cleaning the goddamn kitchen for your ass. But this is how y'all treat them? I'm confused. But yet I'm the angry black woman as I always am. When I say I don't want to watch Big Brother because it's some bullshit, they say, oh, that's Kamisha again. Yes, it is. She's here. Hello. It is in your face when I say these things. When I put up, I say a mammy or I say a jamama, jamami, whatever. I hate the word anyway. But what I'm saying, to, when I, my, I say all that to say, I'm going to educate and teach the children, regardless of who they are. If you think it's cute because she's cooking cookies and they're teasing them and they're making food and cleaning that thing up while they're upstairs hiding in the HOH and y'all think it's okay or good gameplay, that's weird. Everybody listening to me right now, do you disagree with me? If you do, I don't have a problem with it. But please let me know. Because I will go against anybody. People coming to my comments talking all that crap about, no, no, no. It's just about the food. How is it that you don't understand to have this black woman round? I'm, I'm saying round because how they describe mammies. The mammy would defend the white master. The mammy would do everything to make sure that the white people were safe. She took care of the kids, clothed, Said everything. And she would smile and be happy and make everybody laugh. So when I say these things, I'm, I'm trying to show you history because America repeats history. Do we not? That you guys feel like you carry these ladies to the end where they are. You hear the guys say it all the time. Oh, we got them here. Oh, it's time to let them go now. Oh, she don't know. She's about to cook. All the food reference. I'm like, when I put the title in my space yesterday, it's what they said. I'm not just saying anything. I put up statements they made. It is very offensive to me that nobody sees it or nobody speaks about it or they don't care to, whatever. I, I don't know. It's very, very, very offensive. The fact of the matter is 
Siri, I mean, uh, I say her name wrong all the time. Y'all have to forgive me. But she literally had Matt's back pretty much the entire time. And that's the sad part about it is that she had her back. Felicia had nobody back. Boy was a lazy player. Okay, we know all this stuff already. Not a shocker. My thing is, if we're going to go by gameplay, I still don't understand why nobody didn't want to touch Jag. What did Jag have that was so special that nobody was going to touch him? That he was being saved like it's a buddy system. So you guys, y'all formed an alliance already? Did you guys already say who you're going to go to the final two with? Because Jack and Matt are acting like best friends. I don't recall this being this way the whole entire season. And the fact that I feel like CBS, you can try to hide it, but people have been talking about it for the past couple of days. No matter how many times you change the camera, it's like Jack and Matt forgot they're on the camera. Including Bowie. Bowie, all of a sudden, now it took almost the entire house to be gone for Bowie to play and speak. Now you want to have conversations. Because why, Bowie? There's no competition for you. You can't handle to have three or four people in the goddamn house because you can't handle it, ma'am. You can't handle power. You can't handle confrontation. You can't handle uh, A, B, C, uh, D. That's Bowie. Bowie J's whole game. Her whole game. But look how far she's gotten with that, though. Not a hater. But I feel like Felicia, she sees the evil. Sari don't give a shit anymore, in my opinion. I believe she wants to go home. I feel like that the way they're doing Matt is, is dirty, but I can't feel bad for Matt. I'm looking at it as how it's going. Matt and everybody else is doing whatever Jack says. But the point that I'm trying to make through this whole entire face that I'm saying to you guys, The way they treat it, and I'm not a Felicia fan. You listen to my faces, go to my other stuff. I am not a Felicia fan. And I do not understand how she's been treated so badly by these men. The man gets HOH, and the one person that actually had his back. He decides to throw on the bus. And it just disgusts me to lock two black women out the door, eat their food, and I'm going to say it again, treat them like they're the mammy or Aunt Jemima. When I see Felicia's round face, and again, I'm not even being malicious. This is history for me as a black woman. They describe mammy this way. Round face, dark. And for me, when I see Felicia, that's what I see. And again, this is not an offensive thing. This is not me being disrespectful. This is me being real, and I can say this all day, not just because I'm black, because I know my history. And that's why I was triggered by it. And it wasn't just me. There were other black women who were also triggered by the conversations that were being had, the way they were being dragged. It was to a point where it's like, I don't, I don't like Felicia either, but I don't like how she's being treated as well. I'm not going to sanction that because I don't like her gameplay or whatever. or didn't like how she was in the game. That doesn't have anything to do with the other. I see some beautiful queens here in my space listening. I am curious because I know some of you guys are stands and some of you guys watch Big Brother. Shout out to all you queens here. If anybody wants to weigh in on this topic, I would love to hear 
your response. Because what made me do the space today was spoiler girl's post. And I have it in the camtron above your head. You guys can see it. I had already did my rant yesterday. And my video kind of trended on TikTok and a little bit on Twitter because I went off. And not everybody was a fan of what I said, but I don't care. I will continue to stand where I'm standing at. I just gave you guys a brief lesson about a round black woman that they called the mammy that would be in the kitchen cooking and cleaning of the master standing out in the front protecting the white master against soldiers because we've always put every fucking body else on our shoulders before us and stood strong and took care of the whole goddamn world and I almost hate that Sari looked out for Matt this season I do that's one thing I will say I regret because I felt like her play was smart. Because in the end, if Matt was doing the right thing, you know what I'm saying? For them to want to give that second seat to Bowie Jane is weird. I, I don't know. And like I said yesterday, I said, I don't, I, it doesn't matter to me if people of color do not agree with me. As much as I love my people, I do. I had a conversation. I said, y'all may not agree with what I'm saying or may not like my approach or think I'm too passionate. That's fine. I always stand alone a lot of times. That shit don't faze me. I'll stand by myself and, you know, saying, feel how I feel and I'll go against every fucking Biden, Big Brother community. Because I do not agree with any of this bullshit. And people can say it's not racist or I'll make it about racist. I don't care. Because I love gameplay. I do. But this point, this this uh, live feed moment, it made me regret seeing two black women over 40 in the house for the first time in the season. I regret them being there. Because that's something I did not want. To, when I first saw them going to the house, I said, one thing I don't want to happen is the whole mammy situation. People was like, this is kind of extreme. I was like, I'm telling you. we it's, It happens very easily for us. And I want to be very calm when I did this today because when I went and I read Spoiler Girl's post, she said it so flippant that I said, instead of me coming in here and getting upset, I want to make sure that when I'm teaching and breaking down today, I'm teaching and breaking down today. I want to make sure that even the ignorant one, and I don't mean ignorant, ignorant ones receive this message. Does anybody want to come up here and respond to any of this? If you felt a way about even what I said or even what's been going on in the live feeds, the floor is open. Sheena, did you want to speak? You haven't been online. I know you haven't been online, but do you want to say anything, Mama? Because, hold on, I got a request, okay? I'm going to add you like I always do, Sheena, just in case you want to, it's there. Welcome, welcome, Queen. Or, I'm sorry, I see the picture, I don't want to assume. Tracy, how you doing? Hi. <laughs> yes. I'm doing good. I just wanted to say I like agree with everything you say. Like I <laughs> this like last night was really uncomfortable to listen and watch. Like I literally just clicked off from like that trio and just watched Suri and Felicia play cards. I don't think like the level of misogyny like last night was just awful. And I don't think people like Matt suggested that like um Felicia should do some like sexual favors or whatever on feet so she should so she can stay in the house like that just really made me uncomfortable and I feel like people just I don't know I just feel like it's gone to a point where it's like it's not even fun to watch anymore like I don't even think I want to continue watching next week because like obviously like Sri's gonna get evicted I don't want to watch Felicia alone with these like weird people and it just like like it got it, it just it's become so like unwatchable and like just the fake self-righteousness and stuff like I, I don't know I just feel like I don't know I I mean 
I you can't even count on like CBS to like step in because there's been stuff that have that has happened like historically on the show to like black women and they don't care. So it's just like I don't know. And then also for them to be like plotting about like using like isn't like Felicia's like a domestic violence survivor. So for them to be like plotting on like using pots and pans to like rile her up against like so she does like horrible and like the comps next week. Like, it's just really like you don't no one wants to watch that. It's just really weird. It's like it's like basically like a group of jocks like bullying old women. Like who that's not fun to watch. It's like just horrible. I don't know. That's what I was just saying. I was just agreeing with you about everything. And like, I don't know. The end game is just kind of like it's not even fun to watch anymore. Like <laughs> I don't wanna I, like I was mad at Felicia last week, but I would rather her win over like these next like these other three people because they just suck. Like I don't think this is entertaining anymore for anyone anymore. Like we started off the season was like fine and then it just got like really weird and like unnecessary and like <laughs> I just don't want to watch it anymore. Like I mean I hope at the very least I don't know if she can but I don't want to give up hope. I hope Felicia can win the final four HOH and ensure that like one of those three hopefully Matt because him turning on Suri was horrible gameplay to me so I don't know I just hope that she can win that final four HOH and like make sure one of them goes home and doesn't win because like I don't want to see like any of those three people like all there at the end so that's what I was just gonna say first of all thank you for coming up and you can ask Sheena this is probably the calmest I've been of this type of topic but I'm, I'm like in a teacher mode and angry. So it's a different commission. So, you know, I, when I brought up mammies, I told anybody who's triggered. When I describe a mammy, I mean when I say brown, black, smile, make everybody laugh and cook. So there's a reason why there's a theme for this space. Uh, Sheena, go ahead, baby. Then Juliana. Okay. Um, sorry I'm late. I was on the phone with my cousin. You're good, Mom. You're good. How you but, doing, first of all? But, um, I'm okay, you know, good days and bad days. But, um, okay. So, first of all, for those of you that do not know, Spoiler Girl has been exposed on this app as being black. Just so you know. So, add that into whatever you think about her. So, number number two... So I believe the comment that Jag made, and somebody can correct me if I was wrong, was that he specifically said, oh, Felicia can stay because she makes good food. Not just like, oh, I like her food. And so that's where the, um, the mammification comes in. Because it's like, as long as you're going to serve me and provide for me, oh, you can stay. And also, I said on my space that I did on Friday, I think it's very misogynistic the way that Jack has played this game because he went after every single woman and wanted every single woman out that even there's a hint that they could win a competition even before they even won. If you go back and look, he was the instigator to get Mimi out. Mimi had never won anything. He wanted um, Blue out. He was targeting Blue even before she won that veto, saying she could win a competition. Now he's saying, oh, Sari actually, you know, did well in the last HOH competition. Oh, she's got to go. He has targeted woman after woman after woman. Meanwhile, he made a final two with the other physical competition threat. And so I said that in my space, and I'm sure you'll find it funny, Kamisha, that Blue's Clues tried to come up and say, well, I don't see how it's misogyny. That's just strategic gameplay. I said it's not strategic gameplay because he's only done it to the women. If it was strategic gameplay, Matt would be at home. If it was strategic gameplay, Bowie would be at home. And here's the thing that's interesting about Bowie, because we always say that Big Brother is a microcosm of society, and it is. Bowie said out of her own mouth that it doesn't make sense that Felicia was saying she tried to start an all women's alliance and said she should have picked somebody, quote unquote, more female. Now, you might be thinking, what does that mean? My interpretation of what it means is someone that presents in a more feminine way. So Jag 
eliminating every woman that he thinks can win a competition, but Bowie has won twice and she's allowed to stay. Now we're hearing out of her mouth, she doesn't perceive herself to be as feminine as the other women in the house. That's not an accident. So it's not an accident that of all the women, she was chosen to be the last one standing. And then she's saying, oh, I'm not as feminine as the other women in the house. That's not an accident. And so I feel like, he really needs to be held, held to the fire for trying to get every woman out that he could find that he thought could beat him in something. And then not only that, what they are saying, that clip that I saw from last night sitting up there saying like, oh, we need to figure out how we're going to keep a 63-year-old woman from sleeping. The things that these people have been sitting in that room and saying are absolutely despicable and disgusting. And now that we've pointed it out and it's all over Twitter, every time they say something, they start to say something bad, they just switch the camera. So that's what we're going to do now. That's what we're going to do. You're not going to say anything to these people. And then um, that woman who allegedly, I guess, works for the show said, oh, it's so sad that now we have to prepare contestants for the backlash they're going to get from just existing. Since when is talking shit about people and literally planning to torture a 63-year-old woman who's experienced domestic violence just existing? Since when is that? Because we all talk shit. Like, you know, Sari made fun of Bowie's teeth, whatever. Everybody talks shit. Saying, I want to keep somebody from sleeping so they can't compete well is a completely different level. That's not just sitting around joking, we're having fun. So, um, and also, this whole, like, mammification of Sari and Felicia that they did... Bowie has literally been doing Matt and Jack's laundry and making their beds for God knows how long. They've never talked that way about her. Now, what is the difference between Bowie and Serena and Felicia? I think it should be obvious to everyone. So what this game has become right now is absolutely disgusting. And if the three of them end up being the final three, this season, completely wasted. Because... That is going to be one of the worst final threes in Big Brother history. This is season 25. This is supposed to be a landmark season. And to get stuck with Jag, who literally shouldn't even be there because he got evicted. Bowie, who shouldn't even be there because she waited till day like 60 to play. Matt, who shouldn't be there because all he's done is what Jag told him to do. Like these, none of those people deserve to win Big Brother. They don't. Jag is only winning because Cam is gone. And people, I saw a lot of comments about people saying, well, Jag isn't really a competition threat because he's competing against women over 45. No, that, it's not that. It's that Matt and Bowie have consistently been throwing. They literally said it about the veto. They both said, oh, well, we, when we saw that Jag was ahead, I fell back. Both of them said it. Matt and Bowie have been consistently throwing the whole game. That's why Jack keeps winning. And the fact that the, um, the competitions have been overwhelmingly much more physical than they've been in other seasons. We should have had way more mental cops by now than what we've had. So if Serene goes home and Felicia goes home, like, that's it. The season has gone complete as shit. I don't give a fuck who wins because I don't think any of them deserve the money. And if I was a juror, I would literally be like, can I abstain from voting? Because I don't want to give the money to any of those these people. I don't think any of them deserve it. So, yeah, it's a shame for the season to end after all the great moments that we had to end this way. But when those three come out of this house, they need to be held accountable for everything that they said and everything that they did the same way that Luke was held accountable and the same way that Jared was held accountable. Because this is some of the nastiest shit I have ever heard on this show. I have, have never, I've been watching this show since season 12. I have never heard anybody say, how are we going to keep somebody from sleeping so they can't compete? I've never heard anybody say that on this show. So these people, every single thing, disgusting thing that they've said, they need to be held accountable for. Jag included, Matt included, Bowie Jane included. And all of them. Because it's despicable, disgusting to talk about people that way.
especially when Jag was the main one sitting up in the house trying to say that Sari was a bully. Who's a bully now? Like, give me a fucking break. So I just wanted to come up here and say all that. Much needed. I thought I'd do the all in one. Like I said, I was, I was giving them a whole description of a mammy child from the face to the red lips to the slave and everything else because we've been there and done that. And that's what they put. And like I said, y'all know I don't like, I not, have not been a Felicia f- fan since it started. And I, I didn't like for people to say, uh, fill my belly before the competition. That's what triggered this two days ago when I went on this rant, and my video was being shared all over Twitter. Because I was like, who says that? Like, she's not here to cook for you so you can have a good competition. That was fucked up as it was. So I've been on that ass since that day. Period. Okay? So, Juliana, up next. And then, Howie, welcome, everybody. If you want to speak, please raise your hand. Myself, uh, Betty, will add you up. I do appreciate you guys are triggered by the words of Mammy and things of that nature. I'm letting you know now. I'm using those terminologies today because that's what it is today. Period. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wanted to come up and say that I agree with everything you've said. Um, yesterday I was really sad watching the feeds, like especially that they were hiding the alcohol and stuff. And like they don't have to share like that's their alcohol, but they also don't have to be nasty about it at the same time. And they were making cheese curds, which is like a snack that would go well with alcohol. And like they were like making the cheese curds, and then like like it was just really sad and. Like the I don't um I don't want to say the words that you're saying because I'm not black but like the M word and the um Aunt J like the syrup um like I I had a really really sad feeling that it was going to be that way when from the beginning of the season when Riley was crying in Suri's lap um I had a really just seeing that it made me feel really really sad and just like that it was gonna look um that it was going to be like that for this season thank you for saying that and thank you for not saying those words <laughs> i understand your no, i understand no. your position but people always come at me and tell me all the time that i'm an angry black woman and i stand and hold that hat on my head i don't give a fuck i am and if i'm getting the season i said i took issue with some things i saw and I was trying to be on the positive train with my girl, Kid My Cheeks TV, and with Ashina, I was, but you could ask them then, I was so cynical. And it wasn't because I was just trying to be, I wanted to be. I, I fucking knew where it was going. I knew it. I, I completely, it was, oh, baby, I completely stepped back from doing the show because I saw where it was going. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. I didn't. Uh, go ahead, Juliana. And then, um, uh, uh, Howie and then Becky Sheena. It was just really sad because it reminded me of two movies. It reminded me of the help with the little girl and the nanny, and it also reminded me of Princess and the Frog, the little blonde girl in that movie. It reminded me of those two things, and it made me really sad. We sad too, baby. Howie? Hey, y'all. So, I can't really, you know, say that much because I'm a man so I can't really you know be saying like the stuff that I would like be saying as well but like those three are the biggest pieces of shit I've ever seen on this show Matt Jag and Miranda who by the way is Bowie J's real name so that's who I'm going to be referring to from now on because she doesn't deserve a stage name she deserves a shit name which is her birth name Second of all, the fact that they keep saying you know, that even him, Matt, who, you know, by the way, I don't think anyone remembered, Matt said, I think earlier today, America is so dumb. She doesn't cook. She doesn't clean. She doesn't do her own laundry. Boy, you don't even have your own bank account. So even if you do win, that money's just going straight to your parents. And another thing I saw that was really funny, someone posted this on Facebook, the fact that he's an Olympic champion and all he does is float. That's pretty much all he does. It's float. He floats and floats and floats. And he's basically floating all the way to third place because those two other idiots, they're just realizing now that they're losing jury votes at this point. So yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't remember who said it earlier, but yeah, I would be basically upsetting my vote in jury too. I would make this whole season just canceled like BB Can 8. I would blacklist this whole cast, BB 15. No one deserves to be on anything 
except for three, because she's the only one that was true to herself. She was the only one that was actually gives a damn about winning the show. And I will be voting for her for AFP, point blank and the period. I like how you said that. Y'all better do this. Thank you. And y'all better do the same damn thing. Because if I hear Cameron even being in the top three, this show is complete shit. The only person that deserves AFP to citizen is Sari. That is it. Well, over here, how you, you ain't got to worry about that. They will say it in my space. They be blocked and dragged. Go ahead, Sheena. All right. So going back to um, Juliana mentioned Riley. So she was talking about like how much she loves Sari and Felicia and literally said, I believe it's something to the effect of that they were like warm blankets to her. I tweeted about her basically considering them to be mammies. Then you can check my timeline. So literally already week one of the game, I was talking about people mammifying these two women. Warm blankets? What the fuck are you even talking about, girl? So, yes, you were very um you were very correct to bring her up, Juliana, and then to go to the AFP conversation. Oh, absolutely. 1000% I'm voting with Sari or I'm voting for Sari. I think we all need to because the Survivor fans are going to vote for her already. And if we try to split and vote for Felicia, it's possible that Cam can win because from what I'm hearing, he's very popular on Facebook and that's who those people are voting for. So, yes, we need to just go ahead and vote with the Survivor people. And especially after everything that has recently transpired, I was originally going to say, okay, let's give it to Felicia because I was thinking that Sari had a chance to win. So I wanted Felicia, Felicia to get something. But now that it looks like Sari is going home, I 1000% um, want to give AFP to Sari because she does deserve it. And it's been a very long game, a hundred days. I really want her to leave with I know she's getting a bigger check than everybody else there, but I also really want her to leave with something extra on top of that. How are you guessing you want to respond to what Sheena said? Um, yes, also, thank you. We are voting for three, but also I do want to point out to the people who quote unquote claim that Jag was a good competitor. Every comp that Jag has won was the exact same competition. It was basically look at a picture memorize everything and then just go running back and forth you know, to pick the right one think about it first it was you know, otif you know, they you know, had the memory you know, they had just memorized who was who and just run to get the picture the comic competition memorize which one's the real one and then run to get you know, the same thing um what else was there that other hoh which you know, with the teeth it was the same exact thing the one with the vacation pictures the exact same thing this is basically you know, just you know, I'm pretty sure I remember someone in another place said that this is production's plot to force a new kind of winner. And it's the winner that was evicted in the middle of the season, which is stupid. If you wanted to do better to make that, you know, an actual first for production, where was this kind of stuff for other people who were evicted first? Why did it have to specifically start with Jack? And also, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what, but yeah, Jag is not a good player. He is a shit jury management. He is a shit at basically everything that he's done up to his point. And the fact that he thinks that Sari is the bully when she's the one that essentially saved him from eviction, I hope that he regrets everything. And I'm pretty sure. Mark my words, by the time those three get out of the house and you know, go back to social media, they'll de deactivate everything. They'll deny it. They'll deny everything. They'll just you know, fall off the face of the earth because they won't, hold, they won't hold anything accountable to it. They won't say sorry. They won't do anything. They'll just try to save face, try to get into, you know, Serene and Felicia and all the other you know, women from the show on their DMs to be like, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we please talk? I hope to every woman, except for Miranda, Every woman on the show, block them. Block them from everything. Do not talk to them. Do not converse with them. Don't even show fake news with them. Because they don't deserve any fame. They don't deserve anything like other shows. 
like I said, the only person that deserves any ounce of fame after this show is Sari. And also Izzy, because Izzy is also her child. You see Izzy as the baby. <laughs> the other child. <laughs> it's so funny to me. But, yeah, that the vote should go AFP. I, feel, I agree, completely agree with that. But I'm going to cross the AFP. I feel like once she is out of the house, into jury, and we're at that final. I said I'm going to do a little bit of commentary to the end of the season, but I'm not doing much. This turned me off. This season did. And then this last couple of weeks, live feed turned me off as a blogger of wanting to do commentary on Big Brother. Um, it's just been gross. And so I really haven't had the need or to want to do it. So that's just me. And plus, um, and I got this from Kimachi TV. The fall Big Brother, I don't think messes with me either. Um, I just added up reality TV junkie. What's going on? Um, hi, Kamisha. Hi, Sheena. Hello. I'm sorry about my voice. I got a bad cold, but uh, you go, sweetie. Go ahead. Okay. Um, to piggyback off what Howie was saying, um, also the competitions that Matt won all had to do with grabbing a ball or running and grabbing a ball and throwing it at a target or something. So they really need to do something about these comps. And apparently there is not one single woman on the committee um, for competitions. Not one single woman. And they need to change that and get some women involved there and make these competitions more fair and more balanced instead of just making them all physical competitions. This is just ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, this is a terrible final three from what it's looking to be. And there's no jury management between any of them. But I guess they think, well, you guys have to vote for one of us. So neener, neener, neener. And that's what they're sticking with. But I'm really upset about it. Really disgusted I love this how, weekend. I love, how you, I love how you put things... Yes, they probably just say that somebody, they got to vote for somebody. Uh, <laughs> woo, Howie, you got something you want to say, baby? Uh, yes, I did remember. I saw this like tweet earlier, in, like a couple weeks ago, but I don't remember what it was. Apparently, the reason why there's so many physical comps is because one of the comp designers this season worked on American Ninja Warrior. So that could be something to base it off of me but the fact that it's you know, mainly physical comps now and they're not even you know catering towards the older house guests instead like do they really think that older house guests can just get further in the game just off of the social game i mean it's happened before yes but also why aren't they you know catering towards you know every single person equally they could have had mental comps you know, except for you know the ones that Miranda won by just tie votes, apparently. They could have had, you know, more like luck-based comps. Where's everything else? Why is everything had to be physical? It doesn't make sense. This isn't the challenge. This isn't Survivor. This is Big Brother, which is basically a social strategic game. And yes, I am saying that towards those other two idiots, the ones that do that podcast. And I know y'all know who I'm talking about. Who kept saying you know, that? You wait, know, wait. Who you? Hold on, baby. Who are you talking about? I don't know. Who are you talking about? I think Cody. And yes, the pig nose cop and his you know, uh, pigtail. That's they basically even said earlier in the season. Taylor didn't deserve to win because she you know, didn't win that many comps. What does that even have to do with things? This show is basically a social game. If they want to make it, you know, more physical, do the challenge. That's you know, point blank in the period, like. Why everything has to be physical? It just doesn't make sense, and it's stupid. If they wanted this even to be a landmark comp, make more food-based comps, make more mental comps, make, you know, more quiz comps instead of, you know, memory comps, like show more stuff about math, show more stuff about, you know, like actual you know, subjects instead of you know, saying, you know, oh, you have to figure out which picture doesn't have the green shirt. That's not how this game is made for. Like, do you really think that we care about the challenge 2.0? It's insane. Okay, Howie, I love the challenge. So let's. 
<laughs> I'm just telling you, I, I refuse the challenge. Let's not hear the challenge. Okay, Ju- Juliana, go ahead, baby. What you got to say? Um, I just want to also say, like, how stupid it was that the comp- Matt one was the exact same competition. They just changed the color of the ball pit. That was literally it. Yeah, y'all be catching, the, y'all be catching every damn detail. Oh. I, I'm telling you, I ain't been watching it. I'm telling you, I've been detached. Go ahead, uh, Hal. You got something to say? Oh, and another thing to point out. Did y'all know this, that in the Invisible HOH, they let Jag compete again instead of throwing it? When in every other Invisible HOH, they told them to force to throw. It happened with Claire. It happened many times in Canada. Just give me a hit. Just a I want it. I know the exact answer of why they let. Wait, did we lose him? Uh, I didn't hear nothing. Allison Grodner cut the mic. She cut yeah. the mic, so. Uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> she <laughs> on my fucking show. Click. Look, because he was telling a lot. I'm just sitting back like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> I said, the, kid, the kids are telling. The kids are telling the tea in this, in this space today. Oh no, but those no, those two vetoes that Matt won though, that it literally was basically the exact same competition. Like literally exactly the same. Go in a pit, get something out, and put it somewhere. It's literally the same thing. So some people were saying they feel like that this season. I really had spoken about it on live, that they felt like that they were trying to form who they wanted to win. You can't get it exactly, but you kind of can get like, you know, the final This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. Two, three, whatever. And I was like, not thinking about it until now. Like, wow, you know, that's too much. What do you think? It's kind of been, I've been, I heard a little scuffle about it, but I just haven't discussed it. I think if we're really, oh, sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead. I think if we're really being honest, I think they do that every season. Derek alluded um, on my space that he kind of feels like they did that their season. Like I think they yeah, he do that said it the other day. Season. Yeah, he said the other day when he was uh going off and stuff, he said something to that effect because <laughs> he was going off like an hour. But yeah, he said something to the effect. Wow, and I kind of feel like that. Even the shows I review, you know, the other stuff we recently talked about this saying that have literally this whole entire time us bloggers and fans that watch reality TV, had they been literally doing this for the past 20 years that we just didn't freaking know that this whole time they were doing this. Like, to me, I don't think it was just like this year, the past five years. I think the entire time, most comp- most competition shows, they pretty much know who they want in the final two. And when we bitch and complain about certain things, it'll change a little bit. We'll see a difference. And you know they're listening because we bitched about it for a whole summer. But then the next summer is some more bullshit. I don't know. Um, I don't know who Hank got to put up first, but Tracy hadn't heard from you. Tracy, and then uh, Reality TV Junkie. And then I just added you, I don't know your name, three dots. Okay, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> I think they've wanted, like, Jag and Matt to be, like, their final two for, like, a while. I mean, I noticed it when, because, so I would say, like, at the beginning, I, I kind of, I don't want to sound, like, biased, but I will say, like, at the beginning, they kind of, it seemed like they kind of wanted, like, the Jared and, like, Sarit twist to, like, last the entire season. And then you could, like, see the slow pivot to, like, Cameron. And then, like, now at a certain point during, like, when Jury, like, first started, when the flip happened, all of that, they pivoted to, like, Jag and Matt. So they both have these, like, golden boy, like, edits on the show. So I think it's, like, kind of clear they've always wanted them to be at the end. But I do think, like, I mean, I'm kind of one of those people who's going to say, like, the twist kind of, like, messed up this season. Cause especially, like, I don't understand why Jag was allowed to play again after the Invisible HOH. Like, it's literally, like, he said himself on the show, it's literally illegal. And if Jag wasn't allowed to play, Sari or America, who were both targeting Jag and Matt at the same time, that they came in second and third in that comp. So the whole, like in-game trajectory probably would have been different if they just hadn't let Matt, like, Matt, Jag play in that competition, but they did. So then it's like, these people can't win. <laughs> it's just, um, and it's not even that they can't win. It's just that, like, Jag and Matt just got rid of, like, anyone who, like, might have been, like, able to help, like, Sari or, like, able to even go against them in comp. So, like, here we are at the end of the game, and it's like, well, Felicia and Sari, they're, like, 
not necessarily the best physical competitors, but we know like Felicia is like really good at mental comps, but they keep doing like the most physically challenging things. And like, what are two women over 50 years old? Like, how are they going to beat like an Olympian and like people who are like more physically, I guess, better built or whatever. And that's where I feel like people keep saying, well, not people, but like, I keep seeing tweets where it's like, oh, you guys are mad because if it were your fate, like, no, we want comps where like, everyone regardless of like their size or whatever or like their mental capabilities we want equitable comps so that like we don't have like i guess continued steamrolls by the same archetypes every single season like we always see bros like almost every other season we always see bros comp out or get to the like in and like the social strategy or like the social part of the game doesn't matter as much that's why like someone like Siri being on the show is so important because when she was on survivor like she never won she's never won a single like immunity like what individual challenge or whatever right but her social game has always given her a deep run in these very like various different games and then I think like I would say that's the same for this one but because she can't win comps it's like she can't get farther with like these two comp beasts like dominating everything so I don't know that's just my opinion I was just agreeing with you guys so no, no, I'm right there with you. That's why when I interviewed um, Desi from the challenge, one of the biggest things I pointed out to her win is because her and two other ladies were together as an alliance the entire time to the end. Nothing faulted them. I don't care how much drama got between them or nothing. They were loyal the whole time. Nothing broke them up. We never see that shit on Big Brother. We just don't. And so, yeah, just kind of what you were saying, I agree 100% what you said. React TV junkie and then three dots and then Sheena. Um, yes, I um about the rigging. Uh the production has rigged that show um probably since the beginning of time. And it really makes me mad. It's not fair. But um somebody um pointed out in a tweet uh, the other day that uh, they believe that Corey actually won the um path to power that Matt ended up winning and giving to um you know to save Jag uh because he said that um with what little snippets that we saw of it it seemed like it took Corey less balls to get it done than it took Matt. And you notice this year we only show what they say are the top three times on all these time competitions. So there's, is there a reason for that? I wonder, because we're just going to have to take, we have to take their word for it, that these were the top three finishers in each competition. Yeah, I got you, baby. Uh, three dots. And then uh, the queen, Sheena's up. Yeah. Um, so, I just wanted to, because I see a lot of people talking about uh, Bowie Jane and how um, the way she's treating Sari and Felicia that they deserve because how they treated her this entire season, which I don't agree with at all. Um, so Sari and Felicia are around the block. They can differentiate between real and what's fake. And the problem is that Bowie Jane has lied about her age. She's so pretentious, and Sheree and Felicia have to drown themselves around real people, and they saw that. Hey, baby, hey, no, no, no shade, three dogs, but we can't understand what you're saying, baby. We can't understand you. Okay, the point I'm making, hold on. Do you mean the point I'm trying to make? No, 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 we can understand you. We couldn't understand you. We couldn't hear what you were saying. It's like a robot. Gotcha, oh, go ahead. Can you hear me now? You sound clear now. Go ahead. You said you didn't agree with what again? Bowie J. Because or, the, the the space was about Bowie J. The space was about the space was about how Siri, Siri, and uh, Felicia were treated like mammies and slaves, and wanted to cook for the the kids up in the room and being locked out of the door and all the kind of things. The things. What's Bowie got? I mean, Bowie just playing a horrible game, in my opinion. But I'm trying to figure out what is tying into your your. Uh, yeah, I'm your gonna. Point. Yeah, let me just. Um, I was about to go on a whole little tangent, but anyway, did I'll make it short. Did Jag really say? Um, Wait, hold on, hold on, Kamisha. I feel like what he was about to say um, about Bowie Jane though is important because he was saying that people are saying 
what Bowie is saying about Sri and Felicia now is okay because of the way that they treated her. And he was right. saying he doesn't agree with that. I think that's actually important for people to hear because I don't agree with that either. Yeah, well, I'm not telling you not. To, I'm not telling you not to go. I just, I just want to make sure that you understand what the topic of the space that I created was about. Because I, when you came in, you was like you thought it was about Boy Jane. It was not. It was actually about the boys and the ladies. But I still right. want to hear your point. Right. Yeah, I was going to go into that, but um, the point I'm trying to make is that um, <clears throat> Bowie was saying all the shit about Saria and Felicia not being loyal and. And as I said before, Sari and Felicia have cooked for this lady. They have cleaned for this lady. They hooked her up on her birthday, baked whatever cake she wanted, whatever food she wanted. And the other thing is, we saw how Be what Bowie did to Cameron, how he was always there for her, how he included her in everything, made final twos with her, and look what she did to him. So all this nonsense about Sari and Felicia deserve what Bowie is doing to him, doing to our talking shit about her now is ridiculous because look at what she did to Cameron. So that's the whole point I, I wanted to make on when it comes to that. And Sari and Felicia, in my opinion, for the most part, have been good to Bowie because Bowie don't cook. She don't clean shit. And Sari and the Felicia were the main ones there for her during her birthday week doing absolutely everything. So fuck Bowie Jane. Thank you. Fucking Bowie Jane. I agree with you 100% baby. I just didn't know what you were saying but I 100% agree with what you said period. Go, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to say it one time in this space. Go ahead Sheena. <laughs> well okay. I don't fuck with Miranda but I will say that she does clean the toilet, which is the grossest job in the house. So I actually will give her that. I know that she has cleaned the toilet several times. But anyway, um, another thing, since we're jumping on next about Miranda, is last night. So, okay. So Felicia told Matt that when he was working out with um, Jag and Miranda, that they were like making fun of him checking himself out in the mirror because that's to her what it looked like. And Matt said, oh, well, I didn't hear that. And she said, oh, it's fine. You know, we can hear for you, but you just need to be careful because they're making fun of you. So I, I didn't see like this on the live feeds, what moment she is talking about. But Matt tells Bowie and Jag, and they say that, no, we're all looking in the mirror because we're checking to make sure, you know, that our form is correct. And you, we were all doing the same workout, but you were ahead of us. So we were copying what you were doing. So this is what they claim when Matt tells them. So then Bowie says, oh, well, Sari and Felicia wouldn't know that that's what you do when you're working out because they're not active. Now, as you will recall, Felicia was in the military. One. Two, when America was in that house, the only time I ever recall seeing her work out is the week that she left, Bowie asked her if she wanted to get on the bike and she got on the bike because there literally was nothing else to do. Never once have I heard Bowie make a comment or Miranda make a comment and say that America was not active. So I know that we're talking about the boys, but Miranda is just as guilty and has talked just as much shit as those boys. But if you literally breathe too hard near her, she's crying. But she literally has been sitting up there for days talking all this shit about Saria and Felicia that she can think of. Look, can I just say But thing? if they say boo, hold, hold on, on, baby. Hold on, hold on, hold on, baby. Hold on. If they say boo about her, it's the end of the fucking world. But you feel like you're, you put them up. They've never put you on the block and you put them up basically because oh, of what happened with the red vote. Girl, that was how many months ago? Like, what are we doing? So all three of these people need to be held accountable for what they've done this week. And I hope that they are. I doubt that any interviewers are going to ask them 
but I wish that they would because this behavior is absolutely disgusting and we all see it and it needs to be called out by everybody. Okay, before you say anything, baby, uh, three dollars, I'm going to say this. In the beginning of this space, I did say something about uh, fucking boy Jane. Um, now, all of a sudden, there's three people in the house. You want to start talking and shit. Like, you ain't said nothing the whole entire fucking season. You ain't played. You hadn't done anything. You just wanted the best friend. You just wanted a boy in your face. And then I just saw a clip earlier when they called your goddamn ass a fucking man. Like, to me, I, I'm trying not to take it to there. I'm like, you want to be up in the boy's face, smiling and grinning like you... You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and stop. Three dots, go ahead and welcome Mula to the chat. I'm, gonna, I'm about to go off bad so We're going to do it today. Go ahead, three dots. All right, before I go. So, the all the shit Matt, people have been calling him fat, which is kind of funny, but all the things Matt, Jag, and Bowie have been saying about Saria and Felicia. Now, if if it was America and Corey there instead of Saria and Felicia, I still think they would be talking shit about them. But the thing that bothers me is that there's like some, their comments are really ageist. And on top of that, the way they're talking about, they want to stress, stress Felicia out and keep her awake. And it almost like, how should I put this? Like they want her a health, like her to have like a bad health reaction. If the, if that makes sense. Plenty of sense. You're saying they they want to they want something to happen to her because that right. sounds dangerous for somebody older. You're 100% right. They, correct. Right. They would not if Corey and America were there. I, I know they would talk shit, but they're going into like almost like potential health health problems that Felicia could face by saying they want to stress her out and make you know her blood pressure can go up and things of that nature. So that's why that's why their comments bother me so much. If that makes sense. Makes plenty of sense, baby. What y'all need to also understand, too, with Sari being the vet that she is, including Felicia being jealous of her, to them, that is such a receipt. I got Sari at the house. I took out Sari. It's like, who can be the one to do it? They all each other's ass about this shit. It's, it's fucking stupid. Mula, welcome, baby. Because I'm getting, like, irritated. I'm trying not to. I've been good, being good this whole hour. Mula, go ahead, baby. Okay, so, um, can I cuss? Baby, you must have been here before. Okay. You no, good. Okay, fuck Bowie Jane. Fuck Miranda Ball. Fuck her parents as well. I don't like her not one bit. I think that she is one of the most evil people that has ever played this game. She was always scared to say what she was thinking because she was afraid of the cameras. But then she's like, oh, now I don't even really, like even think about the cameras being there anymore. Thanks. We really wanted to see you. And all the black people clocked your ass in the very fucking beginning. That's why you felt that you were ostracized because your ass ain't trustworthy. And how are you going to come with your little wrinkle ass face saying that you're 34? Now, come on now. About to make me mad. Then, for Jack to be Punjabi, for Matt to be hard of hearing, how dare y'all sit over here and be discriminatory against any fucking body? We understand white privilege. That's what they do. That's how they do it. That's what they know. That's what they going to do. But why would y'all let yourself even go down that rabbit hole? I don't care that y'all feel so powerful in HOH. I'm so sorry that you have never had nothing in life, okay? But what you're not going to do is you're not going to sit over here and continuously try to treat them bad. And what do they think is going to happen when they try to crack Felicia? As if she will not get all up in all their faces. I was bullied. Period. Because you know they will. You know they will. You know they will. I'm waiting for that day. I'm waiting for that shit to she happen. 100%. All the fuck out. And I'm excited for it. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. I ain't gonna lie. I'm ready for that. I want her to holler everybody. I don't care to call her ain't black woman. Yell, scream. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Please just, read them down. Them out. Them the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome, Mula. I'm seeing you supporting, but I never see my face. <laughs> so I'm happy to see you over here, Thank baby. You. you be supporting, but I ain't never seen you here. She said, can I? Because I was like, oh, she knew. <laughs> I drag and read all day, baby. That's what I do. <laughs> I enjoy it. Just don't get caught up in the wind. That's all I Good, say. Okay. okay, so okay, but <laughs> I just added Edward up to the stage. Uh, please, if you're not on the speaker, please mute yourself. Edward, you have the floor, and then three dots. I think she needs to put her hand up after that. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, I just want to say Jack is actually. Hang on, baby. I'm sorry, baby. I'm oh. so sorry. I said Edward. 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 You hear, baby? 
Edward. Okay, three dots, you got it. I don't know where yet. Go ahead, three dots, you got it. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. So I just wanted to make a small correction that Jag is a uh, Sikh. He isn't Punjabi. But with that being, he's, he's, um, I, I don't know if it's a, called a tribe or whatever, but he's a Punjabi Indian. Sikh is his religion. Okay, thanks for the correction. But anyway, um, earlier in her season, Jag was calling Sari and Felicia um, bullies the entire time. So um, I just had a question. Where did that come from? Because I don't remember him saying it until now. But now that I'm looking at like um, going. I don't remember. Like, I don't remember when it was said, but I do remember it was said. It was said. He was trying to say, say that more? they were bullied because, number one, none of them had their own brains. And Sari, basically, she was running the show, her, Izzy, and Felicia. And they wanted to say, oh, we were being bullied because we were doing things that we didn't necessarily want to do. And they were making us do this as if you don't have your own say so when it comes to going inside of that diary room saying who you choose to evict. OK. And so them doing that, that's what made them feel as if they were being bullied. Now let's talk about how weak that is okay because that's not being bullied that is just that some people are alphas and some people are not and they were very much so period alphas. don't really want to say that word alpha because you know that's it's an animal term but whatever you know what i'm talking about I, yeah i know <laughs> okay. i got you but i got you on that one but the thing about it was even though she was running it the thing about it the whole thing with red it seemed like that kind of stirred a lot of shit when Bowie J got upset because she didn't know about the red vote, da da da. You know, because in the beginning, they did say those ladies were running it, and they were. And because Felicia would go off and kind of be aggressive when she spoke, then they also said she's building a bully. It wasn't that. Some of y'all were just a little weak, and you followed the leader. That's it. Okay. Um, I don't, the problem I have with that, because I know Jag loves using that black scent with every black per- person he talks to. It's like, him calling them bullies have some crazy racial undertones to me. He he was he calling America a bully that one week when she was saying "fuck you" and "don't talk to me." Was he calling her a bully? Uh, no, nah, he thought it was funny and cute. He thought yeah. it was funny when she walked by. I don't remember that. He laughed at it. He thought it's, it was so damn cute. It's cute when a little white when a young white woman is doing it, but when Felicia, who's just a very direct person to begin with, and she, now she's a bully. So yeah, I'm I'm suspect of Jag. I don't, when it comes to all this, oh, this uh, POC solidarity, solidarity that everybody's talking talking about since day one. There's been something off about Jag when it comes to the um, Black House guests, but that's just me. But you know what? It's funny you being branded up because he felt a way about um, what's the guy's name that was there? He got voted off. The one that was winning everything. Oh God, what's his name? Cameron. Cameron. Hey, okay, so no, no, Cameron. Uh, they, had, they were kind of the same religion. His you know, yes. So that whole thing was brought up. People talked about in the comments saying, oh, the loyalty. Oh, because he made a comment about, you know, POC, like our POC. But it's funny how you brought that up because where is his loyalty? Because he was questioning his with theirs. I felt like he was very loyal to Jag about, you know, our brown, whatever. I think Jag's loyal to Jag. I don't think it matters the race. That's my opinion. Um, Juliana and then Sheena. Um, so I also wanted to bring up like that yesterday, um, Jack was saying that he wants to keep, um, Felicia because she cooks good food. Um, they also said that about like a month ago, they were in the have not room. It was Matt, Jag and Cameron. And they were saying like, just saying like who they were going to vote off kind of. And then they were like, they, this is a quote, the quote that I remember, um, they said Je- um, blue cooks, Sari- like if they were going to vote off Felicia, they're like, well, Sari cooks, blue cooks, they cook, we eat. That's what was said. And they, Cameron and um, Jag said simultaneously, like, they cook, we eat. Wow. Step for wise, this motherfucker, I swear. Uh, look, <laughs> I don't really have any more to add to this. I dragged this shit out already about the whole women feeding men and cave and you woman, me man bullshit. Uh, uh, uh. Go ahead, Sheena. Um, so somebody brought up, I think it was Ryzen talking about like, oh, if America and Corey were still in the house, they wouldn't be talking about them like this. Well, when 
Jag was getting ready to put America and Corey up on the block. All he talked about was, we have been carrying them. I have been protecting them. And so for them to go behind, you know, my back and tell Blue, you know, or for her to go behind my back and tell Blue, oh, you know, they're coming after you and all this. He was upset because he literally was ready to give his firstborn to save Corey. All he talked about was how it didn't make sense and how he was so upset that they did that because they've been carrying them. The way that they're talking about Sari and Felicia right now, it, there was nowhere near anything that they said about Corey and America that it was like this. Nothing. So that shows you right there they wouldn't be talking about them the same way. Well, I mean... Oh, I mean, hold, hold on. But, I'm sorry, hold on. I'm going I'm to I'm call you king instead of three. I'm not three. I'll call you king. But, but hold on, baby, before you say anything. I usually say something in between when y'all talk. But the only reason why they were really tripping about the whole America thing, y'all realize they ain't got nothing to do with nothing. They all want to just fuck her. Sorry who don't like what I'm saying. Half the shit is because they were mad. She chose that little corny guy and none of their assets, period. That's it. Go ahead, king. Wait, before king goes, can I just speak to that? Because. Go ahead, mama. Before America left the house, if we're really going to wake it up and tell truth, some of that behavior that Jag was exhibiting towards her was highly inappropriate and made me uncomfortable to watch. Like that night when he was asking her, oh, can I tuck you in? And she said no three times. And then she had to say no is no, Jag. And then he said, oh, are you sure you don't want me to tuck you in? And she said, I'm positive. And had to do all that and be forceful to get him to walk away and leave her alone? Yeah. No. Mm -mm. You know, no. did the first what, 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 what season was that when that guy touched that girl when they had those white robes on? And he touched her on the butt, and I dragged him. I can't remember what season that was. It's so much stuff that's happening in that house, and nobody says anything. Yeah, you have a thousand cameras on. Go ahead, baby. What would you say? You know what I'm talking about? They had the Tonga, the Tonga, Tonga party, whatever it was, and he grabbed her. I stay out the picture. He grabbed her on the cheek, cupped it, and it was on camera, and nothing happened. Nothing. It was Brett and Hannah from season yep. 23. Yep. And this is what I'm saying. Stuff happens all the time in the house, and like what Sheena's describing, that sounds a mess. But when they're in that house in that bubble, I feel like they get comfortable. The crazy thing is there's cameras on them and you see the real them. They can only have that. And I mean, me and Shayna have had discussion offline. They can only have that facade up if they're an asswipe or a good guy or whatever they're portraying to us for so long until that veil falls off. We see, are oh, you just a really shitty individual? Uh, I'm sorry, King, go ahead, baby. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so earlier to, earlier, I said what I was trying to say was that if Corey and America was still there, they would be talking about them, but in a different way. I just want to point out how they're trying to use potential because of Felicia's age, how they're trying to use certain like code words, hoping that she, you know, have a stroke or something really catastrophic because of her age. It was the point I was trying to Damn. make. Damn. I got That's, you, King. They didn't say they didn't say they wanted to have her stroke, but I, I'm just saying the way they're wording things is they're hoping something health related happens. No, I, I know what I know what you're saying. I know but what you're trying to say oh, without saying it. I get you. Right, right. Um, and I just want to touch base on the America thing um, real quick because Jag is so touchy feely, and I'm glad America put him in this place and stuck to it. The only thing, the main thing that bothered me about America is that during that time when everybody was like, Cameron is creepy. And well, she was the main one pushing that, um, pushing that narrative. Soon as Cameron won HOH, she immediately did a 180, and I'll never forget that she blamed Sari and Felicia for making her feel that way about Cameron, and that she didn't feel uncomfortable with him. It was th those two putting that in her head. It's what she was. She told Corey. Then, as soon as he won HOH, she's twerking on him in his H in the HOH room and ask and say some other sexually um suggestive comments. So that's working. Not <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus she was, okay. she, was she was shaking on him in the HOH room with his, not shaking. 
Who are you talking about? Uh, America? America, yes. She had nothing to shake, so let's not even assault that. Right. Uh, but uh, but, <laughs> um, probably... <laughs> but the problem I have with that is that she ended up blaming Sari and Felicia for her for making her feel that Cameron was a creep and un- made her uncomfortable. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Kay. I'm super goofy. You have to get used to me. Like sometimes when you're talking about some little skinny white woman, I say she was trying to twerk. I could not imagine that. Uh, Victoria, hey baby girl, you have the floor. <laughs> hey, Kamisha, long time no see. You know this is yes, good to see you, Betty. It's really good to see you, Shayna. Really good to see you. Um, I I wanted to kind of hop on here real quick. I haven't really been keeping up with the season. Honestly, I've been kind of checked out for like the last couple of weeks because I don't care about any of these people. They all suck. Um, but I think that like I think you were just saying, you know, people can only fake fake the funk for so long. You know, um, like it's at some point you do forget about the cameras and who you really are as a person that mask slips and now we can all see it. You know, I think that it was, it was really cute and adorable at first with like with Matt and Sari and their relationship. But I, but like to me, no offense to anybody here, but the second that you start being able to quote Andrew Tate X amount of months into being in a house and some of the comments that you make, that takes all that cuteness up out of there. It's not adorable. I think Jag up to a certain point has shown himself to be a good person, but if all, but the thing about Jag, and we've talked about this with the way that he plays, um, the fact that he has no, he and Bowie Jane, really, the two of them have no real personality or like no real, I don't know, like, like they, they can't make decisions for themselves and they play scary and they hide behind other people. That's exactly like what we're seeing right now. It's like you were this good person when you were around certain demog- or certain people, but now that it's down to Matt, somebody like a Matt, Bowie Jane with her own insecurities and her own biases, and now suddenly it's so easy for you to what to turn around and want to want to do some shit that they consider. I mean, they they really do consider keeping somebody up all night. That is a, a torture tactic. It's not cute. It's not adorable. And the fact that you're doing this to somebody who's 63 years old, like, what is wrong with you? Does a $750,000 mean that much that you are actively sitting around talking about, oh, we're going to do this to people as opposed to just being like, you're going up on the block. I don't know what to tell you. Bye. Go home. Bowie Jane needs alcohol so bad that she's got to hide it from other people. Like, I don't know. Maybe when you leave the season, you might need to drive to an AA center. Like, you clearly need to talk to somebody and talking to these people in the house is not getting the job done. It's weird. It's sad behavior. And I know that this is a microcosm for the world. And I realize that there's a lot of people like this out in the world. And I'm not just saying this because, you know, oh, Suri and um, Suri and Felicia have been my faves. They haven't really been my faves. I've liked them. I find them entertaining. I like Suri on Survivor. Um, I haven't really particularly enjoyed her on this on this game. I don't have an emotional investment to anyone here. But what I don't like is watching that sort of bully mentality or that feeling like you have to punch down in order to make yourself feel better about evicting someone. Everybody isn't a bad guy. You, you are not always the victim. But right now, what you're doing right now is making yourself look, a, look like a villain and a bully and a really sad, miserable person. So Jad, Jag, Bowie, and, uh, and Matt, um, I wish none of them could win. They're all terrible people. Uh, to me at this point, just sitting around and plotting on on your house guests, like, that's weird. That's weird, mean behavior. And I, I'm pretty disgusted with the end of the season. I don't really care who wins. Um, I think that it's especially sad to be doing this to, to, to older women. And then specifically the fact that they're still in there cooking. I wouldn't have cooked a goddamn thing. Um, I would have stopped doing that a long time ago. But they're better than me. I will say that. They're better than me if they want to cook and they want to do all that stuff. That's wonderful. I wouldn't personally do it. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm just i just really disgusted with the three of them. And, and I, you know, I was never really on the whole Bowie Jane, Jane hate train, but um, she has really showed her entire ass these last few weeks. So I don't really care. Fuck with Bowie Jane. And I said that shit. Period. Fucking Bowie Jane. Let me tell you something, Victoria. I wish they put my ass in that fucking house. Swear to God, I wouldn't fry a fucking egg. I wouldn't make a piece of goddamn toast. I wouldn't boil water for noodles. Fuck y'all. I'm not cooking shit. Are you crazy? Plus, I want to go in there just so I can go off on them and say, fuck the HOH. 
fuck the alcohol, and fuck your alliance. Just so I can say it one time, so y'all can talk about me in the spaces. Please put me on there, because I'm going to sit here and say this in front of the camera. This shit ain't for older people. Can y'all adjust these goddamn games and sports, please? Because it's not. You can't just have no heavy duty. We do a competition heavy. I'm over 40. I just came to the door. They got a bad fucking knee. You think I'm going to climb a goddamn ladder or slide up and down a water slide? Bitch, get the fuck out of here. Well, I appreciate <laughs> the mental talk saying, you know, you know during the exit interview with Julie, she was like, I mean, you got to be this big, strong guy to win a competition. Like, I appreciate, I appreciate America actually right. sliding that in. And they got it on, uh, they got it on uh, primetime TV where she's like, God, like you can't win a competition, like she or some something towards that effect. But anyway, that's a, that's all. No, 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 that's true. I'm I'm saying like the competition, like when Taylor won that season, I feel like that was the most even I've seen competitions. That's a Big Brother history where it seems like everybody got an opportunity, everybody got a shot to you know to win H O H. I didn't feel like this season. I feel like they were trying to gear it away. They was like, we gave you the cookout. We gave you Taylor. We're going back to status quo. White, blonde, brown. You know, the fuck out of here. Uh, welcome, Rachel, to the stage. Go ahead, baby. You have the floor. I love that you hit the point about the activities, especially the one, um, was it with Zingbot, when they had her going up the rope for Felicia. Period. I was, like, honestly, I was feeling so bad for her. That shit hurt me. I don't know if I could do it. Um, let alone seeing her like she should have just got something for that um and then you've you've hit everyone that has come up but especially you when you started this space I mean you definitely hit it on the nail I wouldn't be cooking shit if anything I'd be cooking just for myself solo and let them see that like I'm gonna cook for myself I see what the fuck you guys are doing especially after the last like that last what was it HOH like Felicia was like, oh, I see people's cards now. Like, I'm really, like, I, I felt bad for her, even though we know she was going to go up. But then when Sari, Sari did call her out, um, that game, like, they had to call people out, see who they were going to target or whatever. And when um, Sari did her, like, throw for Felicia, like, you can see she didn't even do her whole, like, she didn't even really throw the ball. Um, but she did have to target her. And I just felt like, when she got jagged down, like I was so excited for her, but Matt was coming for her anyway. But having Matt and Jag both coming for Sari, like she's smart enough to know where she stands with Matt. Um, she knew there was a chance she was going to go up and she did. I just feel bad. I just feel like knowing that fucking Jag and damn Bowie, both of them, they're going to be voting Sari out just for that reason. And I hate to see that. Um, if she stays, I'll be very surprised um it just depends on the veto but um yeah it's gonna be a tough week and honestly i just kind of stopped watching it i really wanted to read to get it my dogs don't even like it either they're barking in the background oh damn i'm sorry but yeah this is the <laughs> season um it was a great recap and you hit really important parts of history and especially with what's going on in the world um, I should, we should be seeing more peace and people not talking crazy shit like they are now. And it, it is sickening. Um, but I'm going to kind of mute up because the dogs are being rowdy, but I'll try to join in well, when I can. Well, Rachel, first right? of all, thank you. I, I appreciate what you said. That means you were here from the beginning when I gave the whole history lesson about mammies and different things. So you were here from the beginning of the space and I really appreciate that. And the 70 people who are listening now, um, being a blogger is my passion. If you don't know this, um, doing spaces and talking about Big Brother was my passion. For Big Brother, I kind of whatever, but blo being a blogger has been. And doing spaces, I kind of stopped for a little while with Big Brother because of the irritation of it all. But I started doing spaces with Sheena, who's up here now. We started doing spaces on Big Brother, and we were really like the only ones who were doing it. And it's kind of blown up for a lot of content creators who are on Twitter. It's good to see and to see y'all full in here talking about these different topics, especially how sensitive these topics can be and the fact you guys have been in here heavy. It's just good to see. And I wanted to say thank you. Of course, donate to myself. My cash app is up there, Kamisha Reviews. I do appreciate it if you don't mind throwing little donations my way. Um, she can also put ones of her, uh, put hers in there as well. She's been here the whole time. Please make sure you donate to us. Um, doing this is time out of our day. We love doing it, but donations are nice. 
Um, go ahead, Sheena. I'm sorry. I don't know who was first, Juliana or Sheena. I'm so sorry. Sheena and then Juliana. Go ahead. Okay, wait. I'm trying to uh, put my cash app in the space so people okay. can see okay, well, who said that. You want, Juliana to go, you want to go Juliana to go? I think she might have been waiting. No, I'm ready. Yeah. I put, okay, I put it up there. So, oh, she said no. Um, <laughs> for, those, for those of you who don't know, uh, my grandfather passed away about a week ago. So some people have been um, like sending me money for a meal because, you know, like, you know, I don't know if everybody does this, but at least in the black community, when somebody dies, people come to your house and bring food. So if you want to do that, I put my cash up um, at the top. Of course, you don't have to, but people have been asking me what they can do. And I order DoorDash like every day for my lunch. So if you want to cover one of my DoorDashes, you're more than welcome. Now, back on Jag's neck. So I didn't know he said this, but apparently he said, your little tricks ain't going to work. It worked on Survivor and Traders, but not on here. Matt, the Minutemen played Sari like a fiddle. So first of all, for Jag, who has no fucking social game whatsoever and has literally said, oh, I don't care about jury management, to call one of the best social game players in reality competition TV history to say little tricks, please, please. That's number one. You're only still in the game because of the competitions that you won and that Cameron is gone. Okay? You're, you're not great at the game. And people are throwing. You're not great at the game, honey. So let's not. Two, the woman has not won a single thing and is in top five. So, uh, she's done pretty well. That's pretty fucking good. When you started out with 17 people and literally her son is in the house and only, was in the house and only two other people knew. So let's not, don't, don't do that, Jack. Don't disrespect this woman's game and everything she's capable of because you are not 163rd as good as Sari Tiffany Fields. So we're not going to do that. And then also, as far as like the competitions are concerned, so this is something that I heard Bobby Plantain, otherwise known as Johnny Banana, say, and I think it's a very important point that people need to know. Big Brother, the challenge, I'm not sure about Survivor, but Big Brother and the challenge, they are filed as reality shows. They are not game shows. And the reason why that distinction is important is because if something is classified as a game show, in the rules, there ha everything has to be fair. Everything There's a lot of rules about making sure things are fair. That everybody has the possibility to win. There can't be any interference. There can't be any cheating. All these different things that you have to hold tight to. And you can't sacrifice those things in the interest of story. The challenge and Big Brother are reality shows. So production can do whatever they want. And they don't have to follow the rules of a game show. So the fact that we're sitting here talking about how these competitions are not fair, they're doing basically the exact same competitions over and over again so the same person can win, they're getting away with that because it's not registered as a game show. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody um, is aware of that. Juliana. Um, oh, so first of all, I want to say I'm sorry for your loss. And second, I'm um, going back to what Victoria said about the competitions. Um, like, how are Felicia and Sari supposed to compete? Like, even if America, who's like a thin, fit, young girl, can't even do it. Like, how are Sari and Felicia supposed to even stand any kind of chance? Especially when they showed the ball pit that they were already back, like running back before Felicia even got in the ball pit. That's all. I'm going to tell you this. You know, I'm um, not saying that women over 40 cannot do these competitions because I know that if I got the call and they said, Kamisha, you have six months to a year or whatever it is to prepare, y'all would see me go through a whole journey where I would literally prepare, go to the gym, da da da, whatever I got to do. But <clears throat> that ain't to say that even if I got there, I wouldn't have stumbles. And struggle because I am an older woman. You know, I, that's the reality of it. 
but I would never just solely depend on my social game if I went to a competition like this, whether it be the challenge or this or whatever, because just like Sheena said, which I forgot about, it's not regulated like Family Feud or whatever. It is what it is. Production, they can all do what they want to do. They can fabricate a scene. We don't know. That person may not have won. Who knows? We wouldn't know anything about it because they could do what they want to do. We could even sue them because legally they're doing everything under the law. So they ain't sure we can do unless somebody died or something dramatic really happened, which it hasn't happened. We've had injuries, but nothing really crazy. You know, Christmas was the only one that, but the, you know, and that other bitch with the little but foot thing. But the other than that, that was it. So for me, I'll prepare myself knowing it's going to be physical. The only thing I get mad about, because just because you're older, doesn't mean you can't compete. And it doesn't mean that you are a lay, that you are a weak person in the house. That's the irritating thing. You know, we've had older people in the past come through there and kill it. You know, I just think that Felicia, I don't know, Felicia, I looked at her differently. I looked at her like she could do physical. But to be honest, I feel like Felicia baked on she was going to be another uh, Sari, where she could be the queen and have this status and not have to do much. That was her downfall for me in her gameplay. But that's just my opinion. All right, anybody got any closing work? We're about to close this down. Uh, please donate, y'all. I do appreciate Cash Apps. It, it's really important. My donations go to my channel, my YouTube channel, my equipment. I put a lot of money into my equipment as a blogger. I pay for all my stuff. You know, I have my podcast, which I am number five, Reality TV, Black Podcasters. I am right there where Rob has a podcast, Real Fucking Talk. Shit, I'm talking my shit right now. So please make sure y'all go follow me on Apple, Spotify, and all the things, the things, because that shit's popping. Even this right here, this space, will be on Spotify and Apple by the end of tonight, period, okay? So donate. If not donate, follow me on my YouTube channel. Follow me on here. Follow me on everything that's Kamisha Reviews. That's all I need for y'all. So, uh, Sheena, you got any closing words before we get up out of here, mama? No. Just make sure that... You tell everybody in your life you love them and spend as much time as you can with your loved ones because when they're gone, they're gone and they're not coming back. Sorry, mama. Y'all go also check out my video on YouTube. I actually showed some intimate moments where no one knows. I've been going through a lot with my knee and had to get an MRI and some heavy stuff was happening. I actually recorded most of it. and I just uploaded it today. If you want to know what's going on with me, go check it out on YouTube. Just some stuff, just some stuff going on with me. I don't usually share too much, y'all know, but I shared a little bit. So <laughs> go follow me on there, check me out. I will be doing um recap again after the end of the challenge of Wednesday. She didn't join me last week. He was awesome. Hopefully she'll join me again this week as well. Uh, my interview with Desi, which was everything from the challenge. She was a championship winner of the USA, period, who was aligned with two other black women and got to the end with no drama. Go check out that interview. It's up on my YouTube channel. And you should see what she says about, about uh, Big Brother. She said she would never do it. She said everybody who comes out of Big Brother, they're not right. And she said that because the people she was around during the competition had either just Big Brother or had been on it. Now, she never been on it, but she said she ain't for that shit ever. Period. Okay? Now, yesterday, you guys enjoyed my O'Reilly song, so I'm going to lead out that way, okay? Because she did send a letter to her man, Matt. Okay, here we go. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Out of parts. Bye. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today.